Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Deidre Kindred. I'm your nurse advocate, educator, and navigator. And welcome to Health Chats Among Friends. Tonight, I get the pleasure of talking with my good friend, Mitzi Watson, who is the owner of Assisted Living Locators. So Mitzi, say hello. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come and chat with me. So let's tell the audience a little bit about who you are. Okay. So my name is Mitzi Botson. I, I own the company Assisted Living Locators. I've owned it for about three and a half years now. Oh, um, I'm a registered nurse. I'm also a certified okay. senior advisor. And so I feel pretty well equipped to help my clients when it comes time to help them make a change. So what my business does is we offer uh, free service to the families to be able to help them find, like in the case that they're downsizing, help them find an independent living community that best fits them. Um, if they're needing more care, then we can direct them to assisted living communities that will best meet their level of care needed and their budget and hopefully mm -hmm. their location. And then also memory care, uh, we work with those families um, pretty much the same, trying to match the, their level of care need to a community that can best suit them. Yeah. We also work with residential care homes um, in, across the Metroplex as well. So those are a very good alternative many times if, if you're going to be private paying mm -hmm. to going to a skilled facility because it's such a small environment that they get more opportunity to have more one-on-one -on -one yeah. care um, than they might in a skilled nursing facility. Yeah, so first of all, let me say the service is fabulous because lots of times people don't know what they don't know. And so to be able to contact a certified senior advisor or um, someone such as yourself, which you have a added coding because you're a nurse, <laughs> and you really are able to sit with the clients and find out their needs and match them up with the right um, facilities. So I love that instead of getting a list from right. some people or agencies or facilities, and then they're just still lost. Right. And, and one of the services that we provide, you know, once we, we do what we call their intake and we gather mm -hmm. their information, then we will kind of think about the first top three communities that might best suit them. And then we'll set up tours when the family's ready. And we actually go with them on the tours Wonderful. and kind of make sure all the questions that need to be asked are being asked and mm -hmm. um, making sure that they're, you know, they're going to be a good fit before we ever move forward. Right, right. Because you're, I, I go again with the nursing, you know, I'm partial to nurses because we see things a little bit differently when we're looking at things with clients. And so I think that is such an added benefit and the personalization. Love it. Love yeah. the personalization. So Mitzi, why, why did you start this business? What made you leave? Were you in the hospital and you? I was actually in doing pediatric nursing. I, oh, my, yeah. my background had always been maternal child health. Okay. actually became an LVN in 1977 <laughs> and an RN in 1981. So I've been in the nursing for a while. Yes. But maternal child health was always my thing. But um, my mom was diagnosed with cognitive impairment in 2011. Mm. And she came to live with me. And um, I could tell after about a year of her being with us that I wasn't going to be able to continue working the hours that I was and be able to meet her needs. Right. Um, so in my journey with her over the next almost 10 years, um, I learned that a lot of seniors don't have family advocates. They don't have a nurse daughter that can just pull them in and help take right. care of them um, and make sure everything, all the plates are getting spun and all the specialists are going to 
And Deidre, you know about that with mm -hmm. your business. It's keeping up with all of them. So yeah. she had like 12 different doctors. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, so we, uh -huh. were, we were very busy. Um, but that is where I saw being in a lot of the senior doctor's offices, neurologists, you know, um, internal medicine doctors, lots and lots of seniors in there by themselves. Um, mm -hmm. And really trying to migrate this senior journey by themselves, and it's too much. I can tell yeah. you, it's too much. And if if they have a dementia diagnosis, Ooh, is it, it is not possible. They need yeah. someone there with them. Absolutely. Um, and so, yeah, that's how we got connected and decided that you know we this is something we can do to help families. And it is stressful when you're a family going through that, you're overwhelmed just with the mm -hmm. care and then trying to decide the best route to go or mm -hmm. which community might be the best. And, and, you know, it's an important decision. It's not one you just want to just stick them anywhere, you know, right. because not all communities are created equal. So oh, I love that. Yes, they are not at all. And, no. and some of them is so funny. Some of them are... There I say beautiful on the outside mm -hmm. and mediocre on the inside when it comes to caring, professionalism, response to needs. Mm -hmm. And we all know COVID is, it's a factor, it's an issue, but it can't be an excuse. Right. right. You know, um, Cause everybody is going through this season of COVID. And um, I feel like if you can't keep the promise that you made to the client, maybe you should refer to somebody else. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. some, of, some of the communities, you know, right now with COVID, we are struggling with, you know, staffing and keeping healthy mm -hmm. staff and caregivers and even your management team, you know, a lot of them are out every yeah, yeah. Time off because of COVID. So right. it has definitely impacted our senior communities, but I think overall, they're trying really hard to do, mm -hmm. you know, the best they can. So, right. um, but anyway, I'm in those communities. So I know which ones are, are doing well with it and which ones Absolutely. are not. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And it just helps because I remember when, before I had this particular business, I was a nurse working in the hospital. And I remember us discharging people and giving them a list. And the, there, there's that look like, where do I start? You know, and how do I know the needs are going to be met or matched up correctly? So your service is so needed to help that person be able to decrease their stress. Right. And they know that they have you as an advocate that helps them find the locations that are a right match. I think it's so important. Right. And, you know, and with most of my clients, I feel like when our, our search is over and their families, you know, have moved them in, I always call back in about a week um, to see how the, they're settling in. And then I'll mm -hmm. give them until a month mark and check again That's and awesome. just make sure that they are settling in, that things are going smoothly. Is there anything I can advocate for them for mm -hmm. to the community or vice versa? You know, my oh, community, I, love that. I have a tight relationship with them as well. So I want, you know, if I need to do something back and forth, I'm there as the go-between. Right, right. I think it's a wonderful service because I always tell the clients that I send to you or um, that this is no out-of-pocket cost to you. Right. It's just meeting with her, sitting with her, learning what is a match, and then that way narrowing down the community so they don't waste their time going to communities that are not quite a match or don't fit their needs. I think it's a wonderful right. service. Yeah, because if you just provide them with a list and it's not in their budget point, you know, they become frustrated going to look mm -hmm. at the community because they walk in thinking, oh, I can afford to be here. And then really, right. they can't. Um, mm -hmm. and vice versa, you know, you want your community to um, know that they can afford to be there, too. So, right. Right. Um, so that's kind of my job is to make sure that they're qualified fit financially as well. So. Absolutely. And just for educational purposes for the audience, can you describe what is a type A versus a type B facility? 
Yes. So a type A assisted living community is going to be one where your residents are a little higher functioning, like they, they're walking around with walkers. They may be in a wheelchair, but they can like stand and pivot or they can get themselves. They can do their own transfers. Um, the kind of the rule that sets it apart is that um, they have to, in an emergency, be able to get themselves out of the building on their own accord with just verbal direction from staff or firefighters. So if they're on a second floor in an independent living community or a type A, they need to be able to migrate down the steps on their bottom because the elevators are gonna be closed. So they need to be residents that can get around better, okay? And then there's type B communities. Those are for those with the higher uh, level of care needs. So they're needing help with showers and medications and transfers and um, getting in and out of bed, getting dressed, all those things they have to have help with. And so in an emergency, obviously it's left to the staff and the firefighters to get, get everyone out of the building. So mm -hmm. that's kind of... Um, the easiest way to describe the difference between the two of them. And that's great because that's just what some audience members need to know the differences between because that's where the amenities and services really line up. One size doesn't fit all, like you said before. Right. right so great. And then so you also um, locate, did you say independent? Yes. So independent okay. living. Uh, we've, we've, work with those communities. Um, I have several that I've helped go to independent living that were um, maybe in the hospital and mm -hmm. they went to rehab, but really they were gonna go back home. Mm -hmm. And a daughter stepped in and thought that was not in her best interest. She needed a mm -hmm. little bit more oversight, um, meals being prepared because she was losing weight, things like that. And so, yes, I can definitely point them to independent communities um, where they'll get meals and housekeeping and, um, you know, the basics, mm -hmm. uh, activities, some fun things, transport to doctors. Mm -hmm. um, and then the ones with assisted, you know, we, that's a little bit more high level of <laughs> getting into all that medical information. Right, right. Um, and then also memory care, you help place memory care. I do, and I'm a dementia care certified. Mm -hmm. um, I dementia is my thing because that's what my mother had, and we, you know, we helped take care of her almost to the end. Um, Jerry's mother passed of it as well in 2016. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. dementia is our family's thing that we support care for. If I can learn anything about it, I am. If I can educate others on it, I am. Um, and working with memory care communities that take good care of and keep their residents' brains stimulated and things yes, like that. Yes, so uh, important. Yes. Yes. So you have a conglomerate of services and, and ways that you assist clients with finding the right place. But I also heard you mention some dementia type educational programs that you're doing. Can you talk about a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, to be a certified dementia care, uh, just certified in dementia care, we had to take a, a course through our um, organization and um, it was like a five hour course. And then we can take educational programs that they provide to us and we can share those to the uh, people on our Facebook or our business Facebook um, and just let them log on and watch them. They're kind of like, you know, videos. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also am very uh, supportive of the Alzheimer's Association. I work closely uh, with them. We sponsor their events every year uh, since I started doing this. And um, I do some of their community education courses for them as well. That's awesome. So you're providing a multitude of different avenues of educating people. So that that to me, that's what it's about, is you're a true advocate. So if someone wanted to find out more about your services, oh, before we go to that one, what areas do you serve? Okay, so we, um, our ter we actually have territories. However, mm -hmm. I can help place pretty much across the whole Metroplex. Awesome. Um, I have 
uh, partners that we work with that are also assisted living locators. Um, and they, so if we have somebody that we're working with and they're wanting to go to that area, then we work closely with that um, locator to find out, you know, we kind of go through the story, this is their, you know, and what's their best fit. And so we can help pretty much everywhere, um, all the way up to McKinney and Allen, uh, south, uh, down to Mansfield, um, Grand Lincoln, yeah, mm -hmm. and then we have a, my partner is over in Fort Worth, so we just, we're kind of, there's four of us, and we kind of take yeah. on the whole, whole Metroplex. Awesome, awesome, and so the next question I'm going to ask, and then I'll ask you about your information, um, so about how long does an assessment take? So an assessment, I can either come to your home, but what I will say with COVID, we've been careful not to go to people's homes right. because we don't want to take something into them if we were to be sick. Right. Um, you just don't want to take that chance. So we have done more phone intakes and one will take typically 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how long, you know, how much information I have to get. But mm -hmm. um, it's not too long, but it, it gives us a good basis of having the foundations of information of what we need to start matching them up. Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah. So if someone wanted to find out more about your services, your educational programming for dementia, anything about your areas of service, how would you prefer them to reach out to you? Well, they can call. I, I have on my business cards, I have a business phone number and I have a cell phone number and I give that to everybody. So mm -hmm. they can feel free to reach out to me. My uh, work number is 469-250-5220. And then my cell phone is 972-672-2804. And my email is Mitzi, and I'm going to spell it because it's yeah. different. <laughs> it's M I T Z I E W at assisted living locators.com. And then we have a web page also. So it's oh, assisted living locators.com backslash midcities DFW.com. I said that okay. one. So, uh, assisted living locators backslash midcitiesdfw.com. Awesome. Well, Mitzi, thank you so much for your services, your dedication, and your help to educating the community. And thank you for being a guest on our podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yes, thank you. And thank you, everyone, for listening in to Health Chats Among Friends. My name is Deidre Kendrick. I'm an educator, advocator, and navigator. We love bringing you referable resources from our local communities. Tune in next week for another amazing guest. Thank you again, Mitzi. Thank you. Bye, guys.